Okay, this is just a... Yeah, this is just a, um... Another video I'm doing in relation to, um, GitHub. And it's just a, um, project that I have on there, which is Code Igniter Data Tables. And basically I've done some, merged some changes from some other people into it. And this is basically my fork of the original code, which is from, um, I've forgotten his first name, but from Zeppanik. And, so basically, I, I'm, I have this code here, and what I've done is I've merged the changes in from some other people, and when we go into the network graph, you can see the ones that I've basically merged in. And basically, before I did the merge, those, you, all those lines were actually separate in, you know, with different users down the bottom, but now, uh, because of the merge, they now all appear in, um, sort of my area. And when you go on to the, um, sort of the little dots, you can see what users, um, sort of did, um, the work on, on each line. Cause as you can see, obviously the lines are different colors to show that it was a different, um, sort of author. And, so I'm just showing you the way you can see how the rest of the chart is empty from where all the merges, the, sorry, the other non-merged code used to be. And then, see, that's the branch, which is the master one, where I added some changes in. But what I did is I created an add forks branch just so in case the merge messed up and I didn't want to mess up the master and so what we have here at the moment is the add forks branch which has had all the other well most of the other changes merged in and so basically if we go to the um to the main page and then get the link for the actual repository and then what you do is you'd clone it um to your local machine. And basically that repository is one that you've already sort of forked. So, but if you watch the previous video, you'll see where I showed how to do that. So if we, so if we go into the, um, into that project now, and then basically, when you look on GitHub, you can see the two different branches that are there. So what I'm going to do is just check out the um, master branch just to make sure we're on that one. And one thing I found is that if you just now go straight away and try to work on a different branch without checking it out as well, sometimes you get a, a funny message. Um... And you know, I think that's what I'm, what I'm obviously explaining something about that. Okay, so now if you try to merge the add forks, then you get this message because basically I haven't checked it out yet. So that's why the best thing to do. Yeah, I was going to do what they said, but what I remembered is that the easy thing to do is just, just to check every branch out that you're going to work with. That's, that's usually easier than, than sort of adding the, um, yeah, so you check it out, and then if you check back out the master, what that does is that kind of sets it up um, so that now, when you actually do the merge, it works straight away without having to do what they said about, you know, adding the origin, etc. 
because basically both branches by doing the checkout you make them both local and so there you can see that the branch has been merged in and there were nine changes in the readme file for the extra information I had to put in about the changes I made and then 49 total changes with the pluses being the additions where it tells you there are 43 insertions and 15 deletions well that's total anyway um, and, and because the code that was added was pretty straightforward it's um it wasn't anything too intrusive so that's why when I did this merge it didn't actually need the merge tool um, but if we go to the um, network graph you see that nothing much has changed we're still the same as before and that's because in order for the changes to show up you have to actually push them to github now okay so now we're pushing them up over ssh and it says that the remote is now at the same state as the local hoppy and if we reload the page, you then see that the um, master and the add forks have been merged together, and so now they just appear as one line. And of course, all, all of that will appear in sort of my repository because, um, well, I did the, the latest work, so what happens is on the graph, it's all the latest. Um, uh, code that appears to the right and so th there was these other two but th those ones it, the things that they were adding didn't seem to really be anything that that beneficial but the ones that I did take in they actually see the, the code that they put it, it wasn't that much code um, but they hopefully will sort of you know add something useful to the functionality of the library after me i haven't tested it out yet, but that's one thing i have to do um just to make sure the merge was okay and if we go to the original um repository and then check the network graph there then what we'll see is that those changes are mirrored in his one as well so anyone who does work on github the changes will appear in everyone in the repositories of all the forks so effectively all the forks they stay linked and the only real way you can sort of get rid of that is by creating a fresh repository and then uploading it fresh and then that would break the the links to all the users but then the thing about it is that it makes it harder for them to then merge stuff into your code so it's not really worth doing you know so you know because even though they then the other users won't appear on the list it makes it more difficult to collaborate and as you can see the because Zepanik hasn't worked on it in a while, so his contributions are a little bit further down on the chart. And so one last thing I was going to show you is from the previous video, I couldn't remember um, where the configuration file was for the merge tool. So I'm just going to quickly um, go through that now. So basically, it's, it's in a file called git cons dot git config in the home directory and it basically holds the information um sort of in relation to your um uh, well, well to your user basically so the editor that's for if whenever you do a merge and the uh, window comes sorry the text comes up for the commit messages then whatever editor you choose in there is is what that message is loaded into and then gpg that's for just for if you want to sign your tags and then the gui editor that's just for if you're in x11 or windows it, so it'll show up in the um 
under control is your mouse and keyboard rather than the terminal and then the merge tool that's the one that you actually use to merge the local and remote code together and it has to be one that supports um, a three-way merge because as you can see the diff tool command it shows you that's so any tool that you use as long as it can support loading in two files and then showing the result in a third file then you can use it as a merge tool um, in uh, with git and basically uh, the, the stuff that's in there I didn't work it out myself I just obviously did a search on the internet to find out what the configuration file would look like um, but what I what I'll do is hopefully I remember to just put a copy of that in the description without the email addresses just so you can check it out okay thanks for watching see you